The Divine Beasts were sort of like dungeons for Breath of the Wild, and while I personally enjoyed them, some fans did not. With Tears of the Kingdom looking to make itself the amazing successor to Breath of the Wild, will classic dungeons be added? Tears of the Kingdom is growing ever closer, and with it winning the most anticipated game of the year, I know that I am not alone in being excited for it. Today, I wanted to talk about the topic of classic dungeons being reintroduced in Tears of the Kingdom. The Divine Beasts were sort of like the dungeons in Breath of the Wild, but kinda not really. They were quote, smaller scale versions of classic dungeons with a few puzzles in each to fulfill a larger scale quest and then fight a boss. Now, I personally liked this part of Breath of the Wild. I thought the Divine Beasts were challenging. I liked the puzzle aspect. Aspect, I liked being able to fight the boss and take over the Divine Beast back from the control of the Malice. I felt accomplished knowing that I was able to secure a Divine Beast back to our side, and I really felt it was a great tie-in for the overarching story. While I will admit some of the bosses weren't all that challenging, I still feel like it was really rewardable for what you had to do and like I said, bringing them back to your side. I actually didn't see the big uproar in these Divine Beasts being the dungeons for Breath of the Wild, other than the fact that they didn't really look like dungeons, instead they were more like a steampunk as beast that you had to go inside of and complete. I really felt that the rest of the game more than made up for the lack of classic dungeons in this game. I mean, Breath of the Wild really wasn't trying to recreate an older Legend of Zelda game. It was trying something new, and I think it did really well. I do think what most people have an issue with, though, is not these divine beasts, but instead the shrines being labeled as dungeons. Which, in reality, they do take a lot of inspirations from older classic Zelda dungeons, but put them in smaller scale. But I really don't think that they were trying to, quote, take place of the dungeons in Breath of the Wild. I really think the team wanted to just put some fun puzzles in the game that would drive players to be able to get extra hearts and extra stamina and create a little challenge in doing so. And honestly saying little challenge is sort of a detriment to the Zelda team for the amount of work that did go into these. I mean, there are 120 shrines in this game. And while you don't have to do them all, doing them all is amazing and I feel the reward is great. I really love what you get for completing them all. It's way better than finding all the Koroks in my opinion. And honestly, the challenge Challenges there, I feel like, for completing them all, and even just finding some of the shrines is a challenge in itself, and the puzzles itself are really fun. And although these puzzles were shorter than classic Legend of Zelda dungeons, a lot of these puzzles had me ready to throw my controller. I did think they were clever though, and like I said, the fact that they did 120 of them is no small feat. I will give all of those who wasn't really a fan of these shrines this though. They did sort of lack the pizzazz that older Legend of Zelda dungeons did have. They were kind of bland on the inside, and while they did look cool, they all almost looked exactly exactly the same. And the problem with separating all these is they really couldn't work together the way they would if they would have done classic dungeons. They couldn't take on specific themes that classic Legend of Zelda dungeons had either. So of course this led many Legend of Zelda fans wondering what would classic dungeons look like in Tears of the Kingdom? And honestly after what little bit we have seen for Tears of the Kingdom, it looks like the devs have listened to that request. And before I go on, I will just say this isn't confirmed. There aren't dungeons confirmed in Tears of the Kingdom. Actually, there's not really much at all confirmed for this game even though it's only three months away at the time of recording this, but there are a lot of subtle hints in the trailer that make me think that dungeons may be back in Tears of the Kingdom. The first one comes from the very first trailer we got announcing that this game was even in development. Not only are Link and Zelda walking around underground towards Ganon in what looks to be like a dungeon scene, which I mean I think is a pretty obvious smack in the face that we could be exploring dungeons in Tears of the Kingdom right out of the gate, but in this split second we see the entrance to what certainly does seem to be a dungeon. It is unclear if this entrance is in the sky or on the ground. To me, it kind of looks like it's just dug into the side of the mountain, but either way, it does seem to be significant to the game as it does look like a grand entrance to a dungeon. And I mean, why else would they show that in this trailer the way that they did in the split second scene that you see? It actually makes me wonder if this split second scene we see is the exact dungeon that Zelda and Link are walking through in that 2019 trailer. It's also interesting, especially if this is the dungeon they're walking through, which for the sake of this video, I'm going to say it more than likely is that there is tons of Zona architecture inside and around this dungeon. There is a theory from the awesome YouTuber Zeltic that theorizes that the Zona could have been an evil race that worshipped Ganon. I'll link that in the description for you guys to check out. It's pretty awesome. But in all reality, we really don't know much about the Zona other than the fact that they were a race that existed. But it does make me think that this further theorizes that this is a dungeon, maybe that the Zona had constructed to keep Ganon sealed, 
or maybe alive. And this just makes me that much more excited for the game. This is not the only time we see suspicious looking dungeons in this trailer either. In the latest trailer, we see, after all the confusing first half of the trailer, that Link is pushing open a rather large door. And while it is possible we could get distracted by the dragons on the door or the Sheikah eye on the door or all the weird writing in text that no one has deciphered yet around the dragons, don't forget to think about where Link is coming from. What is behind him? Unlike the potential dungeon from the first trailer, this one definitely takes place in the sky. Another thing that I feel like supports this theory that this is a dungeon is the long corridor that Link has to run down. Much like the dungeon from the first trailer, there is a rather large scale entrance. Of course, this one leads to big doors that Link pushes open from the other side. Now you may be thinking, Dusty, there is literally no door behind him because we see him running from the other side later on in this trailer. Trailers like to do that. They like to mess with your brain. They don't want to show you exactly what's going on, so they'll mesh clips together just to mess with us. When it shows Link head on, he is in a different location running somewhere else. It also has been pointed out that at this point in the distance, you can see a rather large scale building that people are saying could be a dungeon or maybe a main hub of the game. You can also see another view of it or maybe a different one here. And directly after he jumps off that cliff in the trailer, we see Link jumping on a boulder that takes him into the sky. Now, if you look to the left of that and don't get distracted by the fact that he is going upwards on a rock, maybe with that time reversal mechanic we have all seen in these trailers, it definitely looks like there is an entrance to a cave right here. I don't personally think this looks like a dungeon per se, but instead I think it just confirms something that IG Anuma did say in that delay announcement trailer where we saw the seven second clip of the broken master sword. He said we will obviously get to explore the ground of the previous map that we explored in Breath of the Wild, and of course the skies above as they really have pushed, but he also has said that the expanded world goes beyond that. Now, from the beginning, I thought that he meant underground exploration. A lot of people were thinking underwater exploration, and I never could really get behind that. I think this clip of Link going up with what seems to be the entrance to a cave just further proves my theory that we are going to get some underground exploration. And I think that statement alone hints to the fact that there may be dungeons in this game. And this exact spot does lack the pizzazz of a dungeon entrance, but it definitely does look like an underground entrance. Which segues us into the next topic I wanted to talk about. The Zelda team knew that fans wanted dungeons in this game, classic Zelda dungeons. And while the shrines were just elevators that sort of took you underground, it possibly could be that now we have entrances underground. Which is kind of funny if you think about it for a game that has advertised sky exploration so much as this one, and the fact that they released Skyward Sword HD on the Nintendo Switch, and everyone's been like, okay, why in the world did they release that? There has to be some sort of connection here. But if you really step back and think about it, how are we getting sky exploration in this game? By Hyrule literally being ripped apart and land masses floating in the sky. And if Hyrule is being torn apart, what does that leave? Massive holes in the ground, which leads to many entrances to underground, entrances to dungeons, entrances to places hidden from the rest of Hyrule itself. And man, if this mysterious Zonai race really did worship Ganon and this dungeon Link and Zelda explore in the first trailer really is some sort of shrine that the Zonai kept Ganon in, that Link and Zelda somehow found and resulted in the rest of the world being lifted up, revealing even more dungeons like this, Man, are we in for a treat. And what if this dungeon holding Ganon isn't actually sealing him, but is instead keeping Ganondorf the man alive in some weird Zonai way? What else are we going to find under the earth when Hyrule absolutely gets yeeted into the sky? And what a Nintendo thing to do to advertise sky exploration, but really the real treat will be the underground and cave exploration and dungeon exploration in Tears of the Kingdom. And if you have followed this game for any length of time, you'll know that there is a theory that these seven things here actually represent the seven tears of the kingdom and it's possible that the seven tears of the kingdom are obtained by going to seven different dungeons and that definitely does seem likely and that really has been a theory for a long time that has made a lot of sense and with all these subtle hints in the trailers like nintendo likes to do this could very well mean these dungeons and underground entrances could be the key and guys i know if you're anything like me you watch tons and tons of theory videos on this game because we really don't know much about it and we're trying to just piece together what we have seen and you theorize yourself with stuff that may seem off the wall but is like hey we could totally see this you never know or stuff that's just blatantly obvious in the trailer. And I think all that stuff is amazing and it is my favorite thing to do for this game. But just really think about how the land is being ripped apart and this could totally make for some underground exploration in the game. I feel like this is something I hadn't really thought about because I've been so wrapped up trying to deep dive into this game and figure out what we're going to see rather than just saying, hey, the land is getting ripped apart. This means there's massive cave entrances, massive possibly dungeon entrances in this game. I feel like there's a new trailer coming soon and I'm definitely excited to see what they're going to show off because I feel like it's time that we start seeing a little more since it's 
only around three months away at the time I'm making this video. If you want to check out my last in-depth trailer analysis of the last trailer we got for Tears of the Kingdom, check that out right here. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. You guys have an amazing day and God bless.